Hey guys, Comic Boom here to review Captain Marvel the movie. I just couldn't resist. I got to give my two cents worth, uh, despite the fact that according to a an, a revision to a YouTube algorithm, probably nobody will see this. In other words, instead of only 20 people watching my video, there's now only going to be 10. <laughs> but that's all right. This is a fun movie. I'm going to tell you right up front, so those of you that are looking for confirmation bias to reinforce the fact that you think this was a terrible movie before you went to see it, don't watch this video because I love this movie. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. This movie was great. Uh, to the naysayers, man, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I am going to nitpick the movie. I do have some criticisms of it. I mean, it's not perfect. It's probably sort of... I actually put it near middle of the road closer to the top of the Marvel videos I'd say probably I'd rank it about maybe maybe nine or ten out of the you know a little below the 10 mark in terms of all the 21 Marvel movies that have come out uh, where do I start well first of all let me tell you that uh, where people are thinking that there's politics in this movie I don't know this is just a fun movie this felt like a 90s movie and it bloody well should it takes place in the 90s and the soundtracks in the 90s the soundtrack was perfect the soundtrack was great I mean, you could have, you, you can nitpick the choice of songs here and there. I mean, you always can for any movie. But overall, man, I gotta say this worked. Plus, I get to wear my Top Gun outfit here to review this. You know, I jimmied it a little bit, you know. I was gonna, as a joke, I was gonna put Carl Manvers here as a joke, but... <laughs> I just, uh, um, I thought that would be a bad taste, but... Plus, it, this movie deserves some accolades here. You know, guys, you gotta back up and think about... The, the obstacle that Disney and Marvel Studios had ahead of them in for this Captain Marvel movie. Look at all the vested interests that people had in this movie. All the different diverse groups and, and different types of moviegoers that were, had such high expectations for this movie. And they had to please all of them? Forget it. I mean, could they actually put together a movie that was going to satisfy everybody? Especially everyone that's got a vested interest in really ripping this movie down. I mean, let's face it. I mean... This movie, I mean, so many people. Look at all those people out there getting all those YouTube hits for ripping this movie apart because Brie Larson happens to have an opinion that differs from theirs on the diversity of a press corps. Good grief. Who gives a crap? Let's get into it, shall we? Plot-wise, it basically is telling the story in flashbacks of the origin of Carol Danvers. Now, what I like about it is you got to focus on the hero's journey here, right? Because to me, the, it all comes down to that. Is the origin going to tell a hero's journey? What's Carol Danvers' journey? And what's, what I really like about it is that the hero's journey is told in a series of vignettes, uh, in flashbacks. And so it's told in such, in such a way that by the time Carol Danvers really lets loose on her superpowers, on her power set by the end of the movie, it really does feel earned. This is not a Mary Sue character. Now there's been, interestingly enough, there's been some people online that have accused Carol Danvers in this movie as being somewhat of a Mary Sue character on the grounds that at the end when she finally lets her powers let loose that she she knows how to use them right away she's instantly she instantly knows how to fly she instantly knows how to be this super powerful person I never saw it that way she actually struggled a little bit at the end when she learned how to fly it was a I mean she I mean she's she has an intuitive sense of she's had the power for at least six years by then she's had six years of training six years of a deep introspection of being able to control her emotions and then so when she finally lets loose lets loose and expresses those emotions she does so in a very controlled manner and in a very powerful manner and it made sense to me it didn't it it, it, it made complete sense I, I love the way how they the way that they played the 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 aspect of there's a character played by Jude Law by the name of Jan Jan Rog stupid name that's a nitpick stupid names in this movie but his name is Jan Rog, and uh, he basically is training Carol Danvers uh, to, or he, they call her Vers, because when she was, uh, bottom line is when they found her dog tag, they, it was destroyed except for the last part of her name, so they called her Vers. So he basically trains her and he keeps telling her to, you know, to control her emotions, because frankly, he knows something that she doesn't. And that is the fact that he doesn't want her to, if he, he wants to keep her power suppressed. And so, that way, you know, the more emotional she gets, the more likely she is to use her powers. And so, really, by the, by the end of the movie, when she finally is unencumbered by being artificially hindered by a device she has on her neck that is once removed, she finally can completely express herself, and it really isn't connected to her emotions per se. It's not a... it's actually... it actually, uh... it actually just suppresses her powers, and 
by referencing the emotions, it was just a way of sort of psychologically keeping Carol Danvers down. And it, it was, I thought it was very brilliantly done because by the end of the movie, you're actually pissed off of her because you could tell throughout the movie, she, she's const you get a sense that she's repressing her powers. So by the end of the movie, I'm as pissed off as Carol Danvers is in that she can't let loose. So when she finally does let loose at the end of the movie, it feels earned. I'm happy. It's like, I want her to kick some ass though. It's like, enough of this crap. Go kick some ass. That's exactly what she does. Now, in the third act of the movie, when the action really starts to heat up, if I'm nitpicking, uh, I do think that the fight scenes, the choreographed fight scenes, I thought could be better. Uh, they weren't as good as some of the uh, earlier Marvel efforts in the movies. I thought the fight scenes were poorly choreographed and uh, they, they could have been done better, but it was still, it was still fun, it was still exciting. But the combination of the special effects and the fighting, I thought could have been worked a little bit better, but it still worked. It was still, it was still exciting to watch. It was still fun to watch. It was still fun to watch. There were some pot spots though that I wasn't sure what was happening, and they did some. I think they had some problems with some editing in the third act. And I'm, again, I'm nitpicking here, but there were some parts. There were some problems with the editing because uh, in the third act when they're fighting, at one point Carol Danvers is fighting other members of the Star Force. All of a sudden, members of the Star Force that I thought were incapacitated or rendered unconscious, suddenly they show up in a scene that takes place right after chasing her, and I thought they were already incapacitated. It seemed very... Uh, now, I, I've only seen it once, so maybe if I watch it again, I, it, it won't seem that way. But it did feel a little bit rushed in terms of those scenes. But that's really it. That's kind of a nitpick. <laughs> as for the rest of it, Samuel L. Jackson as uh, Fury in this movie. Man, he hits it out of the park. The special effects make him look young. Uh, we're great. You're, you're gonna believe that. You're gonna believe in a younger Nick Fury. The rapport between Nick Fury and Carol Danvers is absolutely spot on here, and that was very much needed for this movie. One of the movie that this movie, one of the ways that this movie succeeded, I have to say, in my view, spectacularly in doing, spectacularly, not just good or great, but spectacularly, is that it took this hero that no one's heard before. And even though Carol Danvers was not part of the phase one or phase two or up to the end of phase three of, 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 the event, of all those Marvel movies, she was there in spirit. It actually fit her in in such, such a clever way that number one, we know that Captain America was the first Avenger. It's amazing how many people after seeing this movie, <laughs> they just, they can't connect the dots very well. So I have to spell it out for them in this review that no one's gonna watch. But Captain America is the first Avenger. He's still the first Avengers people, okay? Carol Danvers, her nickname uh, was Carol the Avenger Danvers. And that's how, that's how Fury named the Avengers Initiative at the end of the movie. When he's coming up with the name for the Avengers in in Initiative, looking for other people with powers like Carol Danvers, he, he changed the name of the Project Initiative to the Avengers Initiative because he saw her nickname was the Avenger. Now, it's perfectly plausible, and it makes sense that Captain America is the first Avenger, and then Carol Danvers happened to use the word Avenger and was inspired by Captain America and was called the Avenger as a call sign when she became a fighter pilot. There's nothing inconsistent about it, and it's beautiful because it's synch it, there's synchronicity. There's synchronicity between Captain America, the first Avenger, and a modern-day Avenger in the 90s, Carol the Avengers Danvers in the 90s. There's a synchronicity there and it's beautiful. And no, it does not feel forced. It actually feels quite appropriate. Very well done, very well done. Another thing people are bitching, whining and complaining about is how Nick Fury loses his eye. Nick Fury makes one comment in Captain America Winter Soldier. He makes a comment, an offhand comment to Steve Rogers where he says that the last time I trusted somebody, I lost my eye. And in this movie, it's revealed how he lost his eye. And well, it ends up that a cat, an intergalactic cat called a, I can't remember what the hell it's called, a Murph, a Gurf, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know, it's not important. He gets his eye scratched out by his pet. That's what it is. And it's funny, he had rapport with the cat. He didn't just have rapport with Carol Danvers, with Brie Larson throughout the whole movie. This cat is a star of the movie too. The cat is called Goose and it plays a very active role in the movie. <laughs> well, not, maybe not that active, but it shows up at just the right time and it's, 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 it's just written very well. 
And so when the cat scratches Nick Fury's eye, it actually brings some humor to it. And Fury's always had sarcasm. He's always been a smart ass. And he's always possessed a self-awareness and a sense of humor along with that self-awareness that makes him such an intriguing character. And there's a reason why Nick Fury, Samuel L. Jackson, has been used and interspersed over the last 21 Marvel movies. It's because he's a good character. And the, fa and the revelation that he actually loses his eye from an intergalactic cat, I think, I think it just, it fits. It's fine. It doesn't bother me in the slightest and it shouldn't bother anyone else. And it's, again, it's not inconsistent with previous movies if you exercise just a little bit of creativity. For God's sakes, guys, those of you, especially those of you who collect comic books, if you're incapable of reconciling those small little retcons, how on earth did you survive collecting comic books, particularly Marvel, for any length of time? Come on. Seriously. Snap out of it. All right. Now, what else is great about this movie? Brie Larson and the other actress who plays uh, Monica or uh, Monica Rambeau's mother, she's got a friendship there. Uh, uh, Lashana Lynch is the actress. She plays Maria Rambo. Uh, Rambo. And anyways, it, Maria Rambo's daughter, uh, Monica Rambo, will grow up to become the, I guess, the uh, uh, another version, another incarnation of Captain Marvel. The friendship between uh, Carol Danvers and Monica, and, and pardon me, Maria Rambo, it really is good here. The most, some of the, the, the most emotional points in the movie are the interactions between those two best friends and it really works it does a really good job here and I, I can't help but chuckle that there's a lot of uh, you know I mentioned before how this movie has managed to actually satisfy many different groups who with you know outside who, who is you know feminists I want this lesbians who want this the gay community wants this everybody wants representation in superhero movies now and that's all well and good and there are you know actually there's this actually has there's people there's even queers that are uh, happy that they, they see a relationship between Carol Danvers and Maria Rambo. Well, good for you. I'm glad you see that. That's good. Again, there's something in this movie for any, everybody. It's amazing that a lesbian can watch this movie and want there to be a relationship between Carol Danvers and Maria Rambo. And I look at it as a Pyrrhian fanboy and I think that... Uh, Notwithstanding some of uh, other comments out there, I think Brie Larson has a nice ass and a very nice body and is beautiful and is talented to boot. So isn't that something that everyone can be happy? A couple of other nitpicky comments here. The special effects at the end, I really loved it when she finally let loose, when, when Brie Larson finally like, boom, she lets loose at the end of this movie. And I really enjoyed the special effects. I got the goosebumps and I got the feels too, man. When she, when she was, uh, there's that one character who plays the, uh, oh man, what's, he's on Guardians of the Galaxy. Anyways, there, I mean, there's a group of scrolls that the Kree Empire wants to destroy. And uh, Carol Danvers is protecting them at the end. And of course, this, these Kree battleships have no idea what's in store for them. And just the experience they have of realizing that they're being destroyed by one person, namely Carol Danvers. <laughs> and she and she's so and she's got a confidence and a cockiness about it at the end that is so kicked ass. This is just a joy to watch. The theater I was at, it was only half full. It was at 3:30 in the afternoon, but everybody was people were happy. I mean, people were laughing. I mean, this this had humor. This this movie had more humor. The last time I laughed this hard at parts of the movie, I have to go back to the original Guardians of the Galaxy movie. This is probably the second funniest Marvel movie out there, in my opinion. The jokes hit, the jokes were spot on. In fact, one of my favorite lines in the movie was a line that people are... <laughs> it's amazing how, how people can take a line and, and interpret it differently. There was a, At one point, it shows Carol Danvers uh, in one of the flashback sequences. She's overcoming the fact that she's... she's uh, She's got to work really hard to become a fighter pilot and work through the military. And one guy says to her, there's a reason why, you call, why, why they call it a cockpit, honey. <laughs> and it was hilarious. It was a funny line. But at the same time, it was not only funny, but it also underscored what clearly is some chauvinism in the military. Is this a big mystery? Does this offend your sensibilities? Come on. I mean, it was it was it was a good line. It was subtle. It, it's it's this is not in your face. When the guy drives by on his bike and tells her to smile, 
She doesn't react like a like a some over overrated feminist bitch. She calmly just puts the paper down. She needs a ride. She just steals his bike and takes off. She, she doesn't rant and rave like feminist feminazi. She doesn't do that at all. None of that's in this movie. I don't know what some of you guys are claiming you see. It's not in the movie. Go see it first. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it to you this way. This is a spectacular movie. Not because it is a spectacular movie, it's a spectacular movie because it actually managed to be a good movie despite everyone wanting it to fail. Or it seems that way. Sorry, but I get to rant too. But at least I'm ranting after the movie's coming out. And guess what? There's not much to rant about <laughs> because it's a good movie. It is. It's a good movie. Wow. So, go see it. And... As far as this nonsense about, oh my god, these, these end credits, I hope, you know, they better not have Captain Marvel play a big role in Endgame because that's gonna, that's gonna show, you know, short thrift all those other heroes. Nonsense. Nonsense. Captain Marvel's already got more screen time than Black Widow. I'm gonna say that again. Captain Marvel has already got more screen time than Black Widow. And she's put up with the controversy. She's put up with the BS. She's put up with all of it. And she's come out. She's had a pretty good opening weekend. And this is a really good movie. I'm looking forward to this. I really hope that Captain Marvel plays a role in Endgame. I think she will. Uh, rumor has it, of course, that they filmed uh, two, two roles for Captain Marvel for, uh, for Captain Marvel in Avengers Endgame, depending on how successfully received her movie was. Well, I hope that they, I hope they give her a decent role. I actually, I, I sincerely hope that they give her a role that is at least on par with Black Widow. It's, I'm not going to lose any sleep at all if they give her more of a role than Black Widow in Avengers Endgame. Because frankly, the, uh, I think it would actually do the movie a great service. Because this is a great movie, this is a great character, and the success of this movie is going to speak for itself. It already has. Another word with respect to the plot, I really like how they subverted my expectations with respect to the Kree Skrull War and how they sort of turned that on its head and they made it a little bit more complicated and I loved I loved how they played with that with the with the intrigue of it and the interstellar espionage of it and the betrayals and the supreme intelligence uh, of the Kree Empire versus the versus the interesting dynamic amongst the Skrull Empire, which is not much of an empire, really. They're sort of scattered throughout the galaxy. I really thought that was well done. And it's so easy to see where this, the potential that this has for future Marvel movies. This is going to be really good. People are talking about maybe having a future secret empire in the movies. Wouldn't that be great, having some Skrulls, you know, infiltrating the Earth in different capacities, uh, as well as uh, the Kree having their own agenda as well. This is good stuff. Guys, that's my two cents worth. And, uh, you know, a thank you to the 10 people that will watch this video thanks to the YouTube algorithm change. <laughs> and uh, until, until next time, guys, <laughs> go out and buy some Captain Marvel merchandise. It's all over the place. It's kind of cool. There's, uh, I should show you, I got the, you know, this, 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 is, this action figure, you got the different heads for the Captain Marvel. I was quite impressed. You got, you got a different fish. She's got, she's got fists. She's got her different fists here that you can, uh, uh, you know, this is sort of the green version. There's the red version as well. Uh, but this one is quite good. There's another head here. I'm trying to get it out. This one is uh, the head that she has when, when she's underwater, I believe. But uh, no, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, it, it, you know, the, the toys, the toys, the action figures, the movie, everything was good, guys. The shirts, man, you got to check this stuff out. This is good stuff. You got to check, check it out. Bah! Guys, follow me on Twitter at Metropolis40. Hit the subscribe button. And until next time, Comic Boom, out.